I still remember the first time I saw it. It was the most magical moment I've ever had. Ever since then, it's been a dream of mine to capture it. And now, it's finally time. So I packed my bags, picked up my buddy Patrick, and off we went. To Lofoten, Norway. The journey would take us through uncharted territories and put our patience and skills to the test. We would cover more than 2,000 kilometers through steep mountains, deep fjords and incredible scenery. And despite all of this, it turned out our biggest challenge was mounting a camera to a tripod. Can it work, you piece of Isn't this the ferry? I think it is the ferry. So the ferry is here, but nobody else is. It's just us. There's a guy in the next... I'll, I'll ask the guy in the car next to us. I asked the guys on the ferry why it didn't leave. And it didn't leave because of bad weather and rough seas. So, our two options is wait uh, nine hours for the next ferry to leave or drive nine hours <laughs> to Lufthansa. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Okay, ciao. ciao. <laughs> okay, we have a new plan. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, the plan is to drive instead of taking the ferry. The only time it's not been raining for like six hours. In the Nine and a half hours of constant rain and two quick charging stops later, we arrived at what would be our base for the week, Hatvika. A lot of factors has to align in order to see the northern lights. Usually, you only see them well inside the Arctic Circle. That's why we're in Lofoten. The sky needs to be dark and clear of any clouds. The breathtaking light show is highly unpredictable and might only last a couple of minutes, even in the best of conditions. If we were gonna capture the northern lights, we would need a fair bit of luck, but also we needed a plan. I mean, it doesn't look like morning, but it's actually 11 o'clock because uh, up in northern Norway, uh, at this time of the year, the sun never rises. Also, very cloudy, raining, so I think it's a good day for, um, for a location scout. Uh, we found this place on Google Maps yesterday, and uh, I love these like old traditional Norwegian buildings. So we're just gonna grab a few test shots. Uh, and hopefully this will be one of the locations if we see the northern lights we can shoot it here what do you think okay so location two uh, mainly just scouting but grabbing a couple uh, photos as well imagine this this frame and then just dancing lights all over. That's the dream. Seeing the northern lights for the first time is one of my most vivid memories. It's not hard to understand why this stunning light show have fascinated humans for centuries. Capturing it would mean I could keep that memory forever. And I was determined to make it happen. We've been 
even uh, checking out a couple of the locations we saw yesterday. Uh, it's looking really nice. The weather is not on our side. Uh, so I don't think there's any possibilities today. It's too cloudy. Uh, but let's see tomorrow uh, or the next days. I mean, look at this. This is why we came to Lufu. We headed back to the cabin to monitor the northern lights forecast and to our big surprise it actually looked pretty promising. It's so crazy, it's like if I was looking at the forecast and it wasn't any northern lights I wouldn't care. But now I know it's, it's a crazy light show just above my head and uh, I can't see it because of the clouds. I'm kind of bummed actually and it's like 12.30 and we're sitting here looking at the forecast the weather forecast, the Northern Lights forecast. Um, we got a lot of uh, cool locations today, so we're ready whenever the Northern Light strikes. We know where to go and what to shoot. But we need the weather. We need the, the Northern Lights to be strong and bright and shiny and dancing. And we need the clouds to disappear. But we'll get there. We'll get there soon, hopefully. But not Hopefully. tonight. Not tonight. Not tonight. So I'm just crossing my fingers, praying to whoever for clear skies tomorrow night. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Oh. We spent the two hours of daylight we had to explore what the beautiful set of islands had to offer. Although the weather was less than ideal, it made for quite dramatic photos. when it's dirty right we washed it like 15 minutes ago but the dirt road out here just messed it up again but I kind of like it I like that it's dirty that it's being used it's not polished it's not cleaned it's a car We're heading out to see the Northern Lights. Tonight, we believe we have the chance. It's a hundred percent cloud cover. It's a low KP index, which means the intensity of the Northern Lights is weak, um, and there's like a seven percent chance of seeing it. But I'll I'll take the seven percent. I mean, it's better than zero. And uh, if we just sit inside and wait, we never see it. I feel really stupid right now. Because <laughs> I bet that we're the only two people in Lofoten out looking for the Northern Lights right now. It's windy, it's raining, it's 100% uh, uh, cloud cover. Actually, it's 99% cloud cover. So there might be a 1% opening in the clouds uh, so that's what we're aiming for that's it we're pulling the plug there's no chance uh, at least not tonight so we're packing up heading home getting a good night's rest and then we're ready for hopefully northern lights tomorrow
Good morning. Again, another day, another shoot. Today, we have Christopher joining us. Yeah. We're doing a bit of uh, car to car photography and also video. And yeah, just to kill the time before it's dark again and we can go northern light hunting. So let's ready? go and get some photos. Let's go and get some photos. Daylight mission complete. I think it's time to head back home and then go out and hunt for the northern lights. We're constantly monitoring the forecast and there's looking like there's a small window in about two hours where the clouds are breaking and the KP values are going up, which is great. Um, so it's looking really promising for tonight. Uh, I think we have that small window and I think we got to use it. So we're heading to the beach, setting up there and getting ready for um, our small little window in the forecast. So I think it's just time to go pack our stuff and head to the beach. We got to like put some warm clothes on, right? Yeah, we're gonna be out for a while, so okay. better dress up. Yeah. This is the first time since we arrived here, we can actually see the moon. It's promising. It's, it's very really promising. promising. North. I like the forecast tonight. Yeah, me too. So, we're all set. We got the frame. There's a small break in the horizon. It's about 15 minutes left uh, from uh, our estimation until there's a small chance we'll see it. So uh, we're just keeping our high hopes uh, up and then, uh, I don't know, waiting, I guess. We had a couple windows, unfortunately no northern lights tonight, so I'm kind of bummed to be honest. Uh, I really thought this was the day and this was the night I was gonna get my photo. But such is life, um, you can't control the weather and unfortunately tonight we, um, we didn't have the right conditions. So um, I'm really disappointed to be honest. After last night's disappointments, we started to lose hope. If we were ever to see the Northern Lights, we needed a miracle. And a miracle is exactly what we got. Good morning! <laughs> it's the last day, uh, and it's a good day, because it's the first time we have blue skies, and even something that might look like a sunrise. So. We have high hopes, we have uh, confidence that tonight is going to be the night. Um, tonight uh, it's forecasted to be even better than yesterday. So um, we are really hopeful that uh, tonight is going to be the day we see the Northern Lights. Um, we have to, because it's the last day. Uh, but waking up and, and seeing blue skies and... Uh, and uh, 
some sun, I mean, not the sun, but it looks like the sun, uh, it's a really good thing. So we're excited. Uh, we're gonna head out, uh, set up camp, get ready, and uh, prepare to freeze all night <laughs> when you the northern lights. Because <laughs> we will see the northern lights today. Like, if, yes. if there is northern lights in the sky, we will be the ones that see it. Yeah, if there is like a small, tiny bit of green stuff, Anywhere in Lofoten tonight, we're gonna see it. So, um, yeah, all fueled up or tanked up or charged up or whatever it's called. And uh, we're ready to head out. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm excited. We arrived at our location for the night and immediately set camp. With 12 hours until our ferry left and the weather gods still on our side, our possibilities were looking better than ever. At least, that's what we thought. Out of everything we've had this trip, snow was the last thing I expected. It's a waiting game and we're waiting. We're not giving up yet. <laughs> I'm never, never giving up. Luckily for us, conditions in Lofoten are changing rapidly. So we waited out the snowstorm, put on some dry socks and headed back out. We just got a small little tease. Uh, the clouds are breaking and we just saw northern lights for the first time. That's a really good sign for the night. We're gonna be staying here for probably like 12 hours or something because tonight we are going to shoot it uh, we're not going to shoot this because it's too weak uh, but it's looking really really promising good little tease thank you just get stronger okay it's supposed to be stronger and stronger and stronger during the night so um, this is looking promising looking promising That is insane! Look at this!
Toto Felipe is a beast. I see a lot of potential in him and his skating. I see a lot of dedication. And I feel like he's really willing to put in the hard work to take his skating to that next level, just like how I was when I was a kid. And man, he's still so young. He's already got the tech ledge skating down, flipping into big rails. So I think the kid has a very bright future ahead of him. I felt at home right away in Cape Town. There's a really open quality in people who live by the ocean. The people here have a real sense of fun, of relaxation, lightness of touch. Everywhere you look, there's real style and originality. And I think it's hard not to get caught up in it. It's got amazing food incredible aromas and color, all the things that make life rich. But I keep getting drawn back to the mountain. 
It's a unique and incredible thing to have a mountain like that right in the center of a city. I mean, up there, you can really feel the vibrancy of the city and its people. I find it so inspiring. October 14, 1947. The really big moment. Through the sound barrier. The first time ever in level flight. Air Force Captain Chuck Yeager becomes the first person to fly faster than sound. Yeager breaks the sound barrier as he tests a rocket-powered research plane over California. 1066. In Britain, invading Norman forces under William the Conqueror defeat the Anglo-Saxons at the Battle of Hastings. 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. wins the Nobel Peace Prize for his nonviolent campaign for civil rights. King accepts the award months later during a ceremony in Norway's capital, Oslo. We are ready to suffer when necessary and even risk our lives in order to become witnesses to truth as we see it. 1912, in Milwaukee, Theodore Roosevelt, campaigning for a return to the White House, is shot in the chest. Despite the wound, the former president heads to a hospital only after he gives a scheduled speech. In 1977, Bing Crosby, one of the most popular singers of the 20th century, dies near Madrid, Spain. Today in History, October 14th, Carlotta Bradley, The Associated Press. Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 